where are we? What do we need to do next? Where are we? Okay, so last week we ended off. I'm showing here. You, you can, everybody can see my screen? Yes. All right, good. So on the right side of the screen, you see basically where we left off. We had a score counter in the upper left, a speed, which was a feature not in the original game, but our game was a little bit too easy, so I decided to add a speed up. So every time you went past a corner, the player sped up a little bit, so this indicates our speed. Now, last week, <coughs> pardon me, as you said, we got in the particles. Now, uh, Sergey made an observation which I agreed with, which is when you run this, it looks good at first. That looks fine. But then once it starts going, it looks terrible. I mean, this is not what we want. This is more of what we want on the left side here. Or perhaps like this. So Sergey's suggestion was, is Ed, why don't you use the built-in emitter uh, object that Corona supplies? Now, this particle trail that we're seeing is, I'm using the CB effects library by Caleb, whose last name I can never remember. I should definitely write that down, but first name Caleb. And uh, he's done an excellent job with it, but um, the one thing about it, now I could probably have tweaked these parameters a little bit, but what's happening here is this thing is generating the particle, and it's trailing behind a little bit due to the, the rendering sequence. The, uh, that is, the object is moving, and then I'm doing a render, generating some particles. And I could probably adjust this and make it line up, but I just said, why don't I just take Sergey's suggestion and go ahead and make something that looks a lot better. So this week, what we've got is the CV effects trail, but we're using a particle emitter as the sort of as the player body. Now that's not really what's going on. I'll show you in a minute. But when we run this now, this is what we get. Oh well, I'm gonna crash. Okay, so I'm excellent at playing this game. So this looks a lot better to me. Now I don't I don't know if it's coming through well on um, on the screencast here, but people can play this on their own machines, and I think that they will agree that it looks significantly better. And we could we could do more with it to make it even better. So how did I do this? What I did was quite simply added about uh, four lines of code, if I recall. If we go into Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, let me uh, let me in this week's release, which is the final release, you're going to see in the app folder under Zigzag Boom Clone will be three subfolders. Uh, the first folder will be empty frame, the second one will be framed, and the third one is standalone. So the standalone copy is last week's code with these player changes here, adding the um, the particle effect. So if you don't care about the framework and you just want to see the, dif the difference in code, this is the version to go to. Now, a little bit later today, we're going to talk about putting the game in a framework, in a comp composer framework, to give it a splash screen, a main menu, and some options. And so that's what you're seeing playing out here. Um, so in the player file, let me bring it back up. All I did was I included a library called PEX, which is something that I've decided to include in this project. It's, um, it's a custom library that I wrote last year to load up all of the three major formats for particle emitters, and I'll, I'll explain what that means in a second. But basically, uh, at the top of player, I included PEX, and I just said PEX is the name of the local variable that stores the module. And then I used a loader out of the PEX module to place in content layer 3 in the center of the screen an emitter defined by this file, which, whoops, which, which I will explain in a minute. I'm kind of doing this in reverse order. I'll show you how this was built. And the only other difference here, or the only other uh, notable piece here is, is that I decided to move the particle into a subfolder. So I keep doing that. Sorry, let me just zoom out a little bit. So what I did here was is I told the loader to use a 
uh, folder, find the particle in a folder. That's all this is saying. So the interesting part here, which we'll get to in a moment, is the particle emitter definition and how, how we got that. So, But we're on line two of my changes. So line one, require the module. Line two, in the creation section, simply create an emitter, store it in a field called my emitter on player, and I could have called that anything. And I'm keeping track of this because I want to be able to remove it later. Uh, let's see, and then the third line of code that I had, so it was only three lines. In the cleanup function for the player, I simply did a remove and removed player emitter. Now, actually, I probably didn't need to do this because uh, at the cleanup time, I destroy the entire display group hierarchy, all the layers. And this was in the hierarchy. It was already added, so it would be removed by itself. But I like to clean up just in case. So I did a display remove and remove the emitter. And then, as you see a little bit later, I remove the player, and we're done. So um, how did I make this particle emitter? Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I will I'll point you in the right direction. And the reason I'm not going to spend a lot of time is because this is one of those tweaky kind of things where you could spend all day getting it to look just right. Let me bring up... The hey, hey, Ed, I do have one, one, one point to, to question you on. Um, all right. So, so we, I know we originally we, we used a library that you were... Yes, you and it's a terrible particle library. Okay. Uh, and then we, went to, <laughs> then we went to CB effects. Yes. And then I know Sergey, you and Sergey had a conversation about using... Um, emitters, the Corona's mm -hmm. built-in, you know, emitter library or whatever, and and so now what I'm hearing is that we've got a, uh, we're using emitters, but we're also using CB effects, right, so. Right, so well, why did I make that choice? Yes, there you go, thank you. Okay, let me, uh, okay, so Sergey demonstrated last week, it's too bad I don't have it, but what he demonstrated was, the problem I had, let me, let me, let me put this in a forward fashion, what you're seeing right here, is the emitter object as created by Corona. It's a Corona uh, emitter object. Let me bring up the... Where is it? It's literally the output of display new emitter where I pass in some definition file. Uh, and in this case, what we did in the code um, is I used my well, own okay. custom builder. And I'll explain. So okay. This custom builder is basically doing some manipulation of this file and then passing it in, I've got all these windows here, into display new emitter. Now the problem is, is last week, sir, I said, last week I said I wanted to use this initially, but I found that as it was moving, the particles that it was generating were not trailing behind. And I didn't spend the time to figure out why. Sergey, on the other hand, made a little demo where he manipulated this by changing the gravity parameters, and he was able to get it to leave the particle trail behind. So the body sorry, of it still looked like this. Yeah, go on, Sergey. Uh, for the people who are watching, on, viewing it on YouTube in recording, you can just watch our previous episode where I explained at the very end. Yeah, that's yes, a good point. Yes. I won't go through the details, but it was a, just a few lines of code. And it looks kind of like what I wanted. However, this week I experimented with that, and I decided that the cost, performance-wise, was very low. And I didn't want to add the extra code to do the trail. So I just used this to make it display like this, and it doesn't have a trail. So to keep, I used CBFX for the trail because I had the code. It was already working. But I wanted a nicer visual, so I used a very basic emitter that doesn't have any gravity parameters for the body of the player. Okay, so so, so you're just basically using the, the best of both worlds to get the effect yeah. that you want. Yeah, okay. the, the cost in this sense uh, was very low. I mean, performance-wise, it's not going to make a bit of difference in, in how it performs on our, our device. So I went with both. Uh, 